Hello and welcome to Byju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the daily quiz discussion for the 20th of June 2022. Beginning with the first question of the day which reads the King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa prize is associated with which of the following? The four options are as follows. Option A education, option B science and technology, option C health and option D journalism. Now what is the context? This article from the PIB notes the UNESCO's King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa prize for the year 2021 being bestowed on India. This award recognizes the use of ICT that is information and communication technology in school education. Note the UNESCO's King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa prize recognizes innovative approaches in leveraging new technology to expand education and lifelong learning opportunities for all. This is in line with the sustainable development goal number 4. This award was established by UNESCO in the year 2005 with support from the Kingdom of Bahrain. The 2021 award recognizes in particular the PM E Vidya scheme by the Ministry of Education which was introduced during the COVID-19 pandemic. Note the PM E Vidya scheme is a comprehensive initiative which unifies all efforts related to digital or online education in India. It was launched in the year 2020. It aims to provide multi-mode access to digital or online or on-air education. Coming back to the question, from our discussion, it becomes clear that the answer to this question would be option A, education. Moving on to the second question of the day, which reads: Consider the following transboundary rivers: Feni, Tista, Umgot, and Kushiara. How many of the above mentioned rivers are transboundary rivers between India and Bangladesh? Please have a look at the options. Let's understand the context first. This article from today's The Hindu notes the seventh round of India-Bangladesh joint consultative commission meeting being held in New Delhi. Given that the two countries, India and Bangladesh, share 54 transboundary rivers, river management of the transboundary rivers will continue to remain an important part of the bilateral relation. And this was stressed in the ongoing consultative meeting as well. Note. All the 54 transboundary rivers belong to the Ganga Brahmaputra Meghna basin. Coming back to the question. Please note all the four rivers are transboundary rivers between India and Bangladesh. Now let us ha- have a brief understanding of all these four rivers. Feni is a river flowing in southeastern Bangladesh and the state of Tripura. While the Tista river is a tributary of the Brahmaputra river, it flows in the Indian state of Sikkim and West Bengal before flowing into Bangladesh. The Umnot River also known as the Wa Umgot is a river flowing through the Indian state of Meghalaya before it passes on into Bangladesh. The Kushiara River is a distributary of the Barak River. Note the Barak River divides into the Kushiara and Surma before merging into each other in the Bangladeshi territory. Hence the correct answer to this question would be D all the above four. Moving on to the third question of the day which reads which of the following statements is or are incorrect please note the question asks for the incorrect statements there are two question statements given here the first one reads india suffers a net deficit in terms of international agricultural commodity trade and the second statement reads among the agricultural commodity imports by india edible vegetable oils account for the highest imports in terms of value in the last few years please have a look at the options now what is the context This article from today's The Indian Express titled An Oil Palm Plan for Home authored by the noted Indian agricultural economist Ashok Gulati expresses concern over the increasing edible oil import bill of India. The article notes that the edible oil imports of India amount to almost 59% of India's agricultural import basket and it amounts to close to 19 billion US dollars for the year 2021-2022. Note almost 55 to 60 percent of the edible oil requirement in India is met by imports. Coming back to the question, the first statement is wrong. Why? Because India does not suffer a net deficit. Note for the year 2021-2022, agricultural exports amounted to 50.3 billion US dollars, while the agri imports into India amounted to 32.4 billion US dollars. hence india enjoys a net surplus in terms of agricultural commodity trade consider the second statement 
this statement is correct because as discussed previously edible vegetable oils account for the highest import in terms of value when it comes to agricultural commodity imports it is followed by fresh fruits and vegetables pulses and spices since the question asked for the incorrect statement the answer to this question would be option a one only moving on to the fourth question it reads Consider the following statements with respect to legislative councils in India. There are three question statements given here. The first one reads, the creation of legislative council requires both the legislative assembly of the concerned state and the parliament to pass the resolution by a special majority. The second statement reads, the legislative council of a state shall not have more than half of the total strength of the state assembly and not less than 40 members. The last statement reads, currently seven states have a legislative council in India. Which of the following statements is or are correct? Please have a look at the options. Now what is the context? This article from today's The Hindu notes the upcoming legislative council elections in the state of Maharashtra. Coming back to our question, consider the first statement. The first statement is wrong. Why? Because the creation of a legislative council requires a special majority in the legislative assembly but when it comes to parliament it requires only a simple majority let us understand the difference between special majority and a simple majority a special majority means a majority of the total membership of assembly and a majority not less than the two-thirds of members present in voting compare this with a simple majority which means majority of members of each house present and voting note this provision is mentioned in Article 169 of the Indian Constitution. Consider the second statement. The second statement is also wrong. Why? Because as per Article 171 of the Indian Constitution, the Legislative Council of a state shall not have more than one-third of the total strength of the state assembly. It is not half. This is mentioned in Article 171 of the Indian Constitution. Also, the third statement is wrong. Why? Because there are not seven states Currently, we have only six states which have a legislative council. And what are these states? These states include the state of Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Maharashtra and Karnataka. Since the question asked for the correct statements, the answer to this question would be option D, none of the above. Moving on to the last question of the day. This is a question from the UPSC 2019 General Studies Paper 1. The question reads, what is CAS9 protein that is often mentioned in news? The four options are as follows. A. A molecular scissors used in targeted gene editing. Option B. A biosensor used in the accurate detection of pathogens in patients. Option C. A gene that makes plants pest resistant. And option D. A herbicidal substance synthesized in genetically modified crops. Before we discuss this question, we need to understand what we mean by CRISPR. Note, CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. CRISPR is a gene editing technology. It is used for the purpose of altering genetic expression. Note, the CAS9 protein is used under the CRISPR technology. While CRISPR technology scans the genome for the right location, the CAS9 protein acts as a molecular scissor which cuts the DNA at a specific location. Note, CAS stands for CRISPR associated protein. CAS is a bacterial RNA guided endonuclease. It uses base pairing to recognize and cut the targeted DNA. From our discussion, it becomes clear that the answer to this question would be option A, a molecular scissors used in targeted gene editing. Moving on to the fact of the day, sovereign gold bonds. What is the context? This article from today's The Indian Express notes a sharp rise in the investments in the sovereign gold bonds during the covid impacted years this the article attributes to the high volatility in the equity markets of india and the investors looking for safer investment options in this context let us understand a few basic aspects related to sovereign gold bonds note the sovereign gold bonds were first announced in the union budget of 2015-16 one of the major challenges in India was the tendency of the Indian investors to invest in physical gold. This was giving rise to two major challenges. The first one was that India was heavily reliant on gold imports and the large demand for gold was leading to a high deficit 
in terms of international trade for India. Also, the choice of gold as an investment option was leading to the creation of idle gold reserves. These idle financial resources was not in the interest of the growth of the Indian economy. So, in this respect, the government came up with the sovereign gold bond scheme. This scheme aimed to reduce the demand for physical gold and it aimed to shift savings from physical gold into financial saving instrument. As the name itself indicates, these gold bonds are government backed, hence the name sovereign. Also, these have a yield component unlike the physical gold holdings. It offers a 2.5 fixed interest per annum which is payable on a semi-annual basis. These sovereign gold bonds have a tenor of 8 years with the option of premature redemption after 5th year. This is all for today. Thank you for being with us.